All right, let's get this show on the road. So um, this video should be quicker than usual because we're really just using the existing structures and adding a little bit. Um, but if we run the main program, select the interpreter, of course, we've got all of these objects, but the frame rate's not so good. One of the problems is that we are using individual calls to set each of the positions and that's not so good. What I want to do is send all the data up front and then use instance rendering to um, get the performance better and reduce the number of draw calls. So no problem. This will take a few steps. Um, the first of those is that we will head to the struct, sorry, the frame and give it some extra fields so if we go down to the resources, I'm going to create a, um, an array, which will hold 1024 matrices. And then just the same as before, we'll have a storage buffer for that array, which I'll call model buffer. And we'll also have a write location so that we keep it mapped in memory and we can write to it. Okay. And in addition to that, I'm going to have a descriptor for that um, model buffer. So just pop in here. Mm, maybe not that. Um, yeah, model buffer descriptor. Okay. So. What I'll now do is I'll just head to the shader and I'll set that up so that we can, instead of taking a push constant, we'll take the um, storage buffer. So when we have a whole bunch of data that we just sort of arbitrarily set and send over, we call that a storage buffer. This storage buffer is gonna be at um, binding index one. Um, it's going to be read only buffer, and then we can just call it whatever we want. Um, I'm going to call this storage buffer is the name of the struct. It holds an array of mat fours. We can do this. We can have um, arrays of unknown size, provided we only have one of them, or it's the last field of a struct. Um, I'm going to call this, yeah, object data. That's fine. So what we'll do is we'll grab the model matrix, but we'll grab the model matrix based on essentially the um, instance um, number. In previous versions, OpenGL and stuff, this would be called instance ID. In Vulkan, that's been changed to instance index. But yeah, otherwise nothing else needs to change. We can, of course, compile the shaders. So if we just pop over, get rid of the old shaders, run the compile script, there we have them. Okay, cool. So now I am gonna, we are gonna have to work on this function, but first of all, I'm just gonna set up the descriptor set. So we'll just head back to the engine file and I'll just minimize this. Here we go, descriptor set layout. So I've made this mistake in the past. It's really important to update the binding count and um, then we can put on the data for our new uh, binding. So this is gonna be binding index one. It's going to describe a storage buffer. There's just one of them and it's working in the vertex stage. Let's give that a second. It is slow. So that'll go ahead and create the descriptor set layout. Now the next step after that is we use the descriptor set layout to make the pipeline. Now this is all set up so that should be fine but there is one thing we need to change and that is if we go to the pipeline Currently we are, where are we? Down here. 
currently we are um, using push constants. So we can just set and say, hey, we have no push constant range. And um, we don't need anything there, but we can just put none, get rid of this push constant info. And now we're just using the set layout, the descriptor sets. Okay, so that's fine. We are good with that. And now let's work on the frame. So we'll go back to the frame, to this UBO resources. I'm going to change this. I'm just going to call this descriptor resources and we'll do a bit of work here. Okay, so I'm going to just do a bit of a trick here for the model um, transforms. I'm going to construct a NumPy array and I want this to be an array of matrices. A little strange because matrices are NumPy arrays, but anyway. So what I'll do is for the array that I'm constructing, I'll put in this list and each of the arguments in the list will be a um, identity matrix. So peer matrix for create identity. Now we don't need to, oh, well, what we do need is we need to loop this. So we use a loop comprehension, um, go for something in range 1024. This will just loop through, construct 1024 of those identity matrices, put them on the list. Now um, I'm gonna have to specify the data type but I only need to specify this once at the end of the constructor and this data will be cast to that type. By default, it's uh, float64. Okay, so let's go back to the original stuff. So I'll just grab everything else that we had up to buffer size, I guess. And we'll use the same code again. So the buffer size, we have 1000 and 24 matrices. They're four by four, they have four bytes each, okay. Uh, we don't need to redefine this, we can use the same data. So the buffer info, logical physical device will not change. Memory properties will not change either. We want this to be CPU accessible. Uh, yep, this will take the new buffer size and we want to change this to uh, storage. Storage buffer. Um, and then we'll just go through the motions here. So we have model buffer and then, yeah, model buffer right location. We're going to map the model buffer's memory. And yeah, this should be working fine. So now we need to make a descriptor for that resource. So we'll say um, model buffer descriptor be pointing at the model buffer. Yeah, it's very clean, very nice. It's a good idea, of course, to, while we remember, go back to the swap chain cleanup function. And we can just use the same functions we had before. Unmap the model buffer memory, then free that memory, and then destroy the buffer. Right, so cool, um, that's looking good. Okay, so just sort of clean this up a little bit. Okay, so in the make frame resources, I'll need to change this from UBO resources to descriptor resources. Um, but I'm also going to need to change the, the bindings. So for the descriptor pool, we want this to allocate um, a storage buffer as well. So yep, that should be fine. Okay, so now that descriptor set should be set correctly. 
So now I'm going to just fiddle around a little bit and make a refactor. And here's what's going on. Um, at the moment, I've got in the render function, this um, scene parameter. However, we don't really know what this is an instance of, so we don't have um, autocomplete working for us. We can fix this by importing scene and then specifying down here that scene is an instance of the scene class. However, this now gets a little potentially a little ambiguous because, well, does scene refer to a variable or does it refer to the module name? There is some ambiguity. So I like to preface that with an underscore, but I am quickly going to have to just check for any instance of scene and rename it. So again, just checking through, this will just take one second. Okay, I think that's fine. Right, so I've got all of this render and all of that. Um, oh yeah, okay. So I'll go through this again. So you have scene, which is an instance of the scene class. Okay, cool. Um, now I'm going to go to prepare frame. And when I prepare the frame, I'm going to need the scene because I'm going to write all the um, data in that go. Right, so I have this uh, model transforms, which is an array of matrices. So I can just look through all of the um, scene data and write that out. So I'll just go down to the render and uh, not render, uh, record draw commands. And this is where I was originally looking through. Just grab all of this. I was originally looping through all of the um, objects and writing those matrices. I'm just going to, where are we? Here we go, prepare scene. Just pass that data in as well. And then go to the prepare scene function. Okay, so I'll paste this in for now. Very messy, but I'll clean this up. Okay, so we don't need any of that. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna set an index starting at zero. And then I'll say, alrighty, uh, take the frame, take their model transforms, thing I of that, will be whatever this thing is, and then increase i. So this will be repeatedly writing all of the, um, the model matrices, and we can use pretty much the same code down below. So this is going through all the triangles, and then going through all of the squares, Okay, so the end effect of this is that after this function has run, all of the um, corresponding positions will be written within this single model transforms object. So now what I want to do is I want to write this out to, um, to the model buffer. And it's actually very similar to what I'm doing above. So I'll just take that same code and I'll say, okay, flatten data, no worries. I get the model transforms and turn them into a bytes object and we don't need to concatenate them. We just need the one and the buffer size. Well, we have I matrices have been set. Each matrix is four by four and four bytes each. Okay, so fair enough. Then we'll set, go to the the model buffer right location, sending in the same flattened data that we just produced and sending in the number of bytes that we need. And there it is. It's um, surprisingly straightforward, provided I've made no mistakes, which are no guarantees there. So we have that. Now I just need to update that descriptor 
write function. So I'll just go down to the frame and then this write descriptor set. So what we could do is we could declare another variable here and then call this twice. But um, what I'm going to do instead is see that we have the opportunity to write more than one descriptor set at once. As a matter of fact, let's make this more robust. Okay, so I'm going to make a list and uh, yeah, just populate it. Okay, so here we're writing the first descriptor, which is the uniform buffer. Now let's go ahead and go, alrighty, um, write to binding one, write a storage buffer. Yeah, we're writing one, and that is the model buffer descriptor. Okay. So hopefully that should be fine. If it's not, we'll find out. Now, we just need to go to the engine and modify the drawing code so that it's not jumping around and doing that push constant stuff. So we'll go to record draw commands. And then look in here, right down the bottom. Okay, so you bind the descriptor sets, that's fine. And now we're gonna start going through all of the things, all the triangles. So what we can do is I'll make a variable called first instance. And this is saying, okay, when I draw, I wanna start from variable number zero and then how many of these things do I want to draw? Well, it would have to be the number of um, triangle positions that I've got registered here. Okay, so take this part. And this is setting that um, instance index parameter that I'm using inside the shader to access the correct model matrix. So all I need to do now is say, okay, well, increase, increment the first index by the um, instance count. There we go. Okay. And we don't need this loop. We're just doing one draw call, which repeats multiple times. And we can pretty much grab the same code and just keep copy pasting it. So we go down below, put that there. The only thing we need to change is this is square positions. And then again, down below, it's just star positions. And there we go, like magic. In theory, that should work. So let me pop through that again. What I'm doing is I have a variable which keeps incrementing every time after I've drawn all the triangles. I pop on, I increment it by however many triangles I drew. And then I do the same thing with the squares and I increment, do the same thing with the stars and increment. And the number of things that I'm drawing is the number of positions registered for each of those objects. So this is a code which I could have a whole bunch of different objects and it would work just fine. So give that a go, see what that looks like. See if I've made any errors. Yes, I have. What have we got? Oh yeah. Okay. So that is line 438. So go back here. Yeah. Prepare frame needs scene, which means I must have added scene to prepare scene. Totally makes sense, but that's not how it's meant to be used. Okay, let's give that a go. There we have it. All right. So as you can see, the, uh, the scene looks the same and the frame rate has increased. Getting rid of loops will always help us in Python. Alrighty. So, um, yeah, 
that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with that. The next stage apart from this will be to put in images and we'll have a different image for each of these objects. That's probably going to be a, a longer video because there is a bit more involved in images, but um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And yeah, that'll be it for now. Have fun and I'll see you next time. Bye.